seen some some people that have worn the the last presentation. Yeah. <laughs> who, who was in, uh, in, in Dublin? Yeah. In Dublin, yeah. yeah. Who was in Dublin last year? Okay. So, perfect. Uh, there is some just the beginning will, will be like the some parts from the last presentation just for introduction, but that one we're gonna show more like cold stuff. And yeah, that's me. The uh, I started like with WordPress 2008 it was something that uh, I had my blog and one day I got a job to do a blog and I, I didn't know how how much work I, I was gonna have with that because it was a famous blog in Brazil and was a huge audience and after that I just start work, work with WordPress. And for a while I just jumped for other technology, but I still engaged with WordPress because I was also the WordCamp Sao Paulo organizer. Like during three, three years in Sao Paulo, I was responsible to organize there. And after that, I started like speaking in other WordCamps. And when I came to Europe, and I went to some WordCamps across Europe, uh, I think my first what camp in Europe was what camp London <laughs> was 2016 was the first one. Um, the first event uh, I, I was a speaker was here in Belfast. Was a, a kind of like a, in the last 12 hours I discovered that I, I'm gonna speak here. Uh, <laughs> that works because I'm here again. So and for today, today we we see like um, about. The concept behind PWA, uh, the basic stuff that we need to do with WordPress for, ma for making things worse, and service worker, and in the, in the end we're gonna show like some features with JavaScript. But the main thing that, I'm gonna, that I wanna show here is the integration with WordPress and PWA. There are some tricky things that we need to know how to make these things work, and if you don't know, like you're gonna like spend uh, a long time like how to fix because there are some concepts that about security and how do we organize the files inside of the WordPress theme. So how how can we fix that? And so and I will show you that. And progress web apps. It's something that like uh, I think Google are like. Saying this for like, oh, progressive web apps is the best thing in the world, then <laughs> everybody likes to talk about that. And it is a it is a language, it is something that we saw or but the main thing is that the user experience. There is nothing related about a, a mesh code that you're gonna make your website uh, progressive web app. The things behind it is a user experience. Like you're gonna give to the users uh, user experience as a native app. So it's a, uh, and also it's something progressive. So we, we're gonna implement something, you're gonna like add features. It's not like something that, oh, I will implement that bunch of features and delete for the clients, no. It's something progressive, we're gonna like style things and give to the users some features that they only have before in a native app and now it's possible with the new APIs that the, the, the HTML5 I, I give to us and the JavaScript I give to us. <coughs> and there are some three, three like, three main words now they change it, like the last Google Earl, they, they put a uh, acronym like FIRE and they're like, to make more fancy those things, but our app needs to be fast, reliable, and engaging. Reliable, it's a, it's a simple description, like we, we never saw the dinosaur, the, the little di dinosaur that appears in the Chrome, this is the name, dinosaur. But that thing, like we always keep like delivering uh, something to our users, so we need something behind to make this happen. And why, I, I think now everybody, know, uh, everybody knows why we need to make like some friendly or uh, with a better performance to the user because everybody now is mobile like it's that's changed like they we have like the biggest numbers use mobile phone and that kind of user is really hard to, to engage them because 
they are so distracted, and so if we create something that takes like 10 seconds, 9 seconds, they're just gone. It's different than the user on a desktop, they're like, they sit that they have the patience for the things happen. The mobile users, you know, they are like commuting or walking or like in the middle of the, the pub or whatever, <laughs> but they are not full, like deep in that experience. So I, I create this, this, this challenge for me, uh, the, the project. The project that I'm going to show today uh, was someone inside the, the community, uh, Wood, WordPress Island, uh, was a guy, it's an English teacher, uh, he asked for help, and I was kind of holidays, <laughs> and I just met this guy, and this guy, they went and like, create a website, and they, they had like, the, hard times, and I said, okay, I, I'm gonna help you. I had this presentation, I will pick my presentation, and make you a website, and so that thing I will, we're gonna finish after, but we already have something that I'm gonna show, and so it's a real project, and the first step, like, we created our website, and we need to test, uh, and need to know, like, where are you gonna start? So, uh, Google Chrome has this, before it was an extension, now it's something native. It's a lighthouse. Uh, lighthouse, it's a test inside Chrome that will pass a checklist and give a score for you, like say, oh, you have that score for, this will make user. <laughs> so you have that score for performance, uh, progressive web apps, accessibility, best practices, and CEO. And they gave to us a, 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 a series of data that we can improve in our website. So the first, the first test that I did, I just like make the, the markup and put the whole thing inside WordPress. And we got that score, it was 27, my score uh, in that application. And the first, the first like, content that we saw was in six seconds, not, it's not cool. It's not so good. So, and we're going to start from here, our journey. The first thing, uh, just like focus on our, like, the things that we, we need to do now. What the Lighthouse shows to us. And they show like eight things that I failed. So, the first thing, uh, well, my website doesn't have a like, HTTPS, it's something really important for me to create, a, it's a requirement for me to create a progressive web app, and I will show why. Uh, we are not respond uh, when our application is offline, so there is some tricks that we can like deliver to the user something offline. And there is another thing that makes our app installable. It's a, 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 it's a little JSON, it's called like manifest JSON. And with that JSON, we make our application installable. So we're going to show a button for the user, and the user can add these things in their home screen. And after, have access for that application. <coughs> so that's a, the checklist that we the checklist that we have with PWA, so uh, that information, there is a, a website that shows like oh, why you should do that, like explain why you should do that. So that whole information uh, inside that checklist, uh, inside the developer Google Web or REST Web App checklist. So there we're going to see everything that you need to make your application a REST Web App. And now let's go. That we saw that the whole concept behind, and now I will show some code. The first thing, uh, make our app stable. So the last year we saw. Oh, there's it's a gift here. So we have this icon, and we click on that icon. We got a home screen. So these are uh, it's a normal website. It's a HTML website. We can do the same thing with our application or WordPress application. But the news about that, in the new version, like Chrome 67, that same schema will be available on the desktop. So we can also install our progressive web apps in our desktop. So this will be available 
the next uh, version of Chrome. There are more things that, that, that Google are implementing on that. It's not just for Chrome, like Chrome are related about Google. Google is the main group like interested on that, but Microsoft also is interested on that. Now, uh, the Edge has support to PWA, so the desktop version, and they are, they, they are making plans to put the progressive web apps inside their stores. So it's something that's it's already like happened. The manufacturer is soon. Uh, everybody can see me, it's, it's hard to see you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. So it's our JSON, and that JSON we we're gonna have the name of our application. Uh, each address we're gonna open our application and the whole structure the whole structure for icons and different size for icons. Uh, icon with 48 pixels, like height and, and width, uh, 96 and 192. So that are the three default size that we need. Uh, the previous talk was built. Built, yeah. So Bill show us like uh, how how to add some features. Inside that custom screen, we have our options to add the icon. So, in my in my example, it's something that the last year uh, was a partnership between Automatic and Google. They show in the Chrome Summit Dev, they show our uh, WordPress progressive web apps, and I I take that example. I made some changes over that because. The guys that made was a, 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 a developer, they, 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 he told that I don't have so many experience with WordPress, so I will make my way, and some not are like, the, the best thing that we should do inside WordPress, but they, they are for, they, that guy was focusing on performance and where they can like, get the like, first experience, so they didn't care about the, the partners, and he didn't know so much of what we have inside. Uh, WordPress. So, and one thing that's in simple, uh, we have that thing that's a site, site icon. So we can use that feature to write a JSON because that function that I created here creates like when we hit that that address, we just give back to the user a JSON with the features that we came by we, we took inside the WordPress. So we are creating that file dynamically. So that file, that, that structure, each different website will give like a, a dynamic information. We don't need like create every project a static file every time. No. With that file we just do once and we can reuse in different projects. So that function I added like inside the functions PHP. So there we can like reuse that function in different projects. So the icons I took from that, the we we, we need a a color for this defining like the background color of our home screen and also the also the, the, the color for the header like for our application. So that color I took also from the custom features inside the our admin. So the, the, the previous talk also show us so Bill showed how to change the color in the footer. We can like take that color from the footer or the header, but in my case I, I took that color from the background. So I use it, the, the property that we are like registering for the background there, just took that color and add in our manifest.json. So after that we, we, we have the file, but we need linked our application with our manifest.json. So that first line, I just like followed this function. So if with that function, we were gonna like create our manifest.json we will return a JSON for the, the front end of our application. And after that, we have 
our manufacturer JSON works okay. So this is gonna work in different applications. We just need like fill that information that will came like dynamically. So we don't like sterically add every time. Uh, so and where we can check that inside the inside the Google Chrome we have that that option application inside our inspect panel. There you can check the semis worker, the manufacturer zone in, a, in the whole storage, offline storage, we can check there. <clears throat> so today, uh, who supports that feature? Uh, this is the important thing, because Google always say, oh, progressive web apps is so nice and you can use it out and you, will be, you change your life. Hold on, <laughs> okay? Uh, the, the, the people are like the still implementing. So Microsoft already have inside the Microsoft Edge, they have support for that. Firefox desktop. So when we are like when we show here like that version, like the version desktop version. So the desktop version for Firefox and Chrome doesn't have, but next version we're gonna like have support for that. Safari doesn't have support yet, but the iOS Safari, the Chrome for Android, and the Android browser works. So it's, uh, uh, we are like thinking about apps installers and mobile phones, so that's fine. Uh, sometimes I, I <laughs> inside of Twitter, like, the, Many people like make jokes about that. Oh, I will talk about progressive web apps and oh, I will show a manufacturer they, they saw and done. Okay, I finished my presentation. <laughs> uh, it's, it's not that. It's not true. Okay, it's not true. Why? Because we just make our app installable, but we need create a reason for the user to go there and use. So it's not simple. Uh, it's just not add an icon and show a home screen. We need behind that as an experience. That's that's the that makes the user go in an open user. So how, how we, we can create that experience? We have many libraries that will give to us, like many features, but we need to think about that. It's just, it's just not add offline things or solvable things. We need to create some that the people will have the, the, the think about, okay, I need to go back there and use that because it will be useful. That's Simple, but make the things useful, and you need to think about that. Okay, service worker. Uh, so service worker, it's, it's a base for the other features. Main features are like the, it's a requirement for for that. It has a service worker installed. And what what is a service worker? And everybody say, oh, service worker, service worker, and service worker. It's a, a script that runs in the background. I think someone said it. I don't know how to say the translation here. Uh, I don't know what I said. Some people are laughing here. So I, I, I think my terrible accent. <laughs> it's okay. Keep going. Your uh, accent is a lot better than our else. I was just listening to start. I think we should send a few Nordies to the testing team. So, and service worker, service worker is is one script that uh, we're going to install in our browser. So, and. That script will run in the background, it will fetch the whole data, the whole data that transfers between the web and the application, that service worker will watch that. And with that, we can create our cache API, offline version, push notifications. So everything depends on that. And that's a, a simple graph. This one, the, my favorite episode of Gumbo, is uh, about the web. How they, they describe how the web works. Uh, yeah, for me, it's the best description about the web. Uh, and the service worker will be here in the middle. Watch everything that passes between the, our application and the web. The requirements for that. The first thing, browse support. So our browse needs to support that, simple. And the second one is HTTPS. 
Why? Uh, it's our requirement because it's something that watch everything that passes between <coughs> your browser and the web. Like, they watch everything. So we need something that's like, okay, that's application safe. You can do that. You can watch that because there is any like with bad intentions between you and the web, okay? Uh, it's just uh, if the many many hosts get gave for free uh, HTTPS, but if your your host doesn't have that, there is like less encrypt and other places that you can create a certificate and install a uh, HTTPS in your application. So in <coughs> How do we can install that? The first thing, the first line here, uh, I'm checked for support. So uh, I'm checking if my navigator has a feature called like service worker. So if my browser supports service worker. And after that, I will access my service worker and register a JavaScript file. Say, oh, that's the file that we're going to run in background. Okay. If everything works fine, we're gonna get a message, okay, your service work is registered. But here is we we're gonna spot our first problem. Why? Because the service worker works with a scope. What that means? The scope is where that file is installed, he will watch everything that came after. So our JavaScript file is inside our theme. So our service worker just watch everything that's inside our thing. But our application, it's so much <laughs> for the, our application, the root. And we are just like give access for I scope that are inside the theme. So the whole data that runs outside that, like the real application, it's I set for the back for that. So we need to fix that. And how are we gonna fix that? I saw I saw two two different solutions. One uh, that the guy from the guy from Google they created a, a file, a PHP file that changed the header and gave access for the service worker to the whole path. And another solution I saw a guy that wrote uh, HTTPS that said that at that file sw.js has access for the root folder. So they, they have access for everything inside your application. So the solution that I used was the first one. I just change that address for a PHP file in the PHP file inside my thing, change the header, say, oh, we can have access for the root folder. And after, I redirect for my service work. <coughs> So that's it's my solution. This is not the, the solution that, I, that I, I choose. There is two two important things here. It's a it's a that thing's a JavaScript class. Okay, so uh, it's JavaScript. Everything JavaScript. Uh, I think some people, some people look at oh, many classes that are JavaScript. No worries. And that's the the trigger thing uh, I got. That global project, that global project, I use it uh, that we have like anchor script to get our script and put it um, inside WordPress. And also we can create inside WordPress like global variables and I just create that variable that storage our template. So in different applications, we're gonna have like different templates. So I change this, that thing dynamically. So that information came from the WordPress. Later I, I can show you how, how we can do that. And our this my my folder inside my, my thing and I just put like a file fix the scope that's gonna change the header. And I specify for that service work that's the scope. The root is the scope. And after that our service work works fine and have access for the whole application. <coughs> So, service worker. Uh, now, uh, 
everybody was celebrating the main browsers as supported now, so Edge, Firefox, Firefox last month uh, implemented support for that, Chrome, Safari, and the mobile browsers as support for that. Now we have our service working now. After that, we're going to install our cache API. We're going to like cache our files inside our browser. How that works? The first thing, we have our web application. That web application, there is different structures. There are, I think, eight or nine structures that check first the, the cache API or check first the web. If it doesn't find that file on the, or if you doesn't find that file on the web, look in the cache or we can do the opposite way. The most popular is go to the service worker and after go to the web, get that file, store it in your cache API and keep going. And the next time when you access the same application, the service worker will check, okay, uh, you already have access for that file, you have some things captured there. Check if you have that thing inside your cache API. So that cache API is stored file in our browser. I think four years ago, the the Chrome, uh, the Chrome, the, the last version for Chrome, five years ago, has a, a storage for 25 megabytes. That now is so much bigger. Uh, what is the the good thing about that? We can cache files inside the browser. The problem about that. Especially on Android, if you use those cleaner Android apps and they try to clean up your Android device, they will clean up also that cache API. So if you start something from that and the user always keep cleaning, so that's things will be good. But that things will help until the user clean up everything inside the Android or inside the, the iOS, that, will, that thing will keep that. But if we have something inside our cache API, return to the user. Doesn't go like we don't need to go to the web. Keep it like keep it going to the cache API. And if he didn't find something here, okay, go to the web and try to find that. <coughs> and there are some steps inside the service work. The first thing we need to check when the service work is installed, and when the service work is installed. Okay, now we can store some files. And the second time, there our service workers are already installed, so keep watching the files that match with our cache API. If they are there, just give back to the user. But that thing, there are many, many problems there because the first thing, our cache is based on one string. Every time that the screen change, our cache will change. But how how are we gonna like make that? We make that. We need to make that not in a way dynamically. If not, because if if we don't change that dynamically, every time we need deploy something, we need change our like version two, version three, version four. But that's not fun. Like and one day you will forget about that. And your user said, oh, why am I taking like, the old style files? Or uh, why am I taking like, the old JavaScript files? And for that, one thing that I use it uh, that makes it simple, there are two, two ways for, to work with that library. Workbox, Workbox, it's a library that Google makes for service workers and cache API. So it makes the whole thing simple, the whole strategy behind that, they create a framework that you just define, okay, I want to check first the cache API, or I want to check first the web before you, you start to hit, look for files. And the application that I create, the, it's available on GitHub, I will show the end, the, the, the last slide will be there, the link, you can check that. I use Webpack with Workbox. There is a library for Webpack that make more and more simple. <laughs> and who, who works with Webpack? 
Um, more? No? So, Webex, it's, um, we have those task, man task managers, for example, Goop and Grunge. Who works with Goop and Grunge? Cool. So Webpack, it's quite similar but quite different. <laughs> Webpack looks for the files, think about modules. So we're going to import everything as modules and they have like their own scope. And inside that scope, uh, we think everything, we, we think about everything uh, as modules and we define rules how to read that files. So inside the, that config file, we need to do two things. The first thing, install the workbox webpack plugin. That's the first step. And the last step is create our service work with that plugin. So that whole structure that I showed like before, the two slides of like 40 lines, we're going to change for that three lines. It's Something like magic, okay? But there are some particular points here that that magic that we are doing here is it's simple and we just do like pre-cache for files and the, the first step we just do like pre-cache files. Okay? Uh, if you go we're gonna do like some different strategy or like for example, oh the user is offline. Uh, when they hit my root folder, I want to give back a fallback file, for example, HTML, I stick, I stick content just with the email address, my location, and basic information that the user like keep, like talk with my client or doing something inside our application. So if we need to do something different that, like, like that, we need to go to another plugin that is inject manifest and that file we need to do more steps. But that previous line that I showed like 40 lines, we with work, workbox we do with three or one or, or five lines. It's 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 more simple. So and now we we make our app stable, okay, we create our manifest JSON. That's the dynamic manifest JSON. We create a caching structure, offline structure also, because I will show after. When, when we use Workbox, and Workbox will read our files inside Webpack, every file that Webpack reads inside them, they create an uh, offline version for that file. Okay? It's thinking about like, hmm, looks good. <laughs> so, because we create like rules for saying, oh, Webpack will like watch like every image that it reads. So when they take that image, okay, put in the cache and give a hash for that guy. And if you build that that file again, clean that hash for like the, the cache, clean that file. So, and we have that three options, runs and why we can do more? Because I, I just put that color different because the things that we saw before here it's, it's something specific for WordPress. So we need to do it that way for WordPress. We can do it in different way. Yes, we can do it in different way. We can just take a take a static file, a static like service work and put in our root file. But we'll be outside our theme. If you want to like reuse that. We need to remember that there is a service work and someone else that runs that. Or if you when we want to do that like dynamically, also that thing like won't work because like, we'll be outside our thing. And after that, we can do everything. Uh, we can uh, use Vue, we can use Angular, or we can use uh, ECMAScript 6 for manager those things and show some native features. And the examples that I use it, I just put like a native social share card. It's something that inside Google Chrome uh, is a, a new API. When you share something, 
not the Facebook share, it's the native share. When we click it, we call that card that shows us all options to share something inside our form. It's something native, it's not, it's not like jumps outside for the, the browser and calls something inside our device. So, one example that I use it uh, in that thing, <coughs> I just check when our app is offline and online, and I just add a class in our body, like the, the body for our application. Well, for why? Like I, I can like do different things with the. For example, one one thing that when our user like goes for offline, uh, the user write a comment. I can check if the user is offline, take that comment in uh, the browser and wait until the, the users get online again and send that comment. Like, because if we don't do that, what is going to happen? Like, the user will try to send the comment, will try to hit a server and say, oh, this request doesn't work or use our connection. Or... So we can control that flow. So when you check if the user is offline, we just keep that information, wait for the browser is still online again, and send that. And the user think that the, the, the comments just gone, but still there, okay? And another thing we can like show in, a, in some way, like for example, I just add a class in our body, and I show a different header. When the user like became offline, the header changed. Uh, So that's application. Just a local. <laughs> I have reinstalled it. I will show. But the things that happen. When I, my application, when my app like goes offline here, that blue header changed to black. That's the thing that happened in that code. So we we can check that like when the, the users are online and offline and do some like here was simple I just change the class, but we can do like more. Uh, native share. Uh, with that API, we can call our share card. So, let me go back live in. Still loading. Up oh, here. When I so it, when I click it on, when I click to share, we just call the <laughs> native share card. It's okay. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> uh, one thing that I can do, uh, another thing that I use in that application, something simple. Uh, in our link, like href, we can use that tag. It's something new. Jio. So that link, what does that mean to? When we click on, on that link calls the Google app, and we can send to our user the latitude and the longitude and the title for, for the, the tag in, in our map. But this is one thing that just works in with like Android phone. And I, in here, I just create a fallback that checks if we are, the users are iOS users. If it's our iOS users, just open like a maps.apple.com and pass the information and we will open like a, a Google uh, iOS map. Okay? 
So that's three things. Like this is just like there are many things that we can do after that. But uh, just think about like after the service worker, like you can do everything after that. Okay. So share API, it's there. Uh, calling maps, integration with other apps. Something that works like in the desktop version. I, I, it's another fallback that I made. <clears throat> when we click share, I, I just made a fallback for call or WhatsApp. If my browser doesn't have support for share and make share, I can share that same information on WhatsApp. But, so that will happen on uh, the phone and also on the desktop. If I click it here, it will open my my WhatsApp. <clears throat> so after that three changes, our score went to from 27 to 82. But uh, oh, 82 it's it's quite good, but just remember, like the best thing, like the the main thing is not like just that number. The main thing is the user experience. <coughs> just when you go to do something like go to improve your application, think about the users, think about how you can improve that, and, and use those features to make the, those lives better. Okay. So, and that was the result. Just with those two, three chains, like as, uh, so. Also, I used HTTPS that improved that number, and the HTTP2 that helps you increase that, that score. And that's it. Thanks for that.